Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo992 and today we're back for another brand new video and aye, take a seat, we're going to be here for a wee while. We're here to talk about PSV5, Rangers 1 and no, I'm not repeating it again for anyone who didn't hear me. The first thing, you go aye, she's watched it. Everyone watched it. Rangers fans, PSV fans, Dutch fans, Scottish fans, Celtic fans, Irish fans, they all watched it, people, for one reason and one reason only, to see who made the Champions League and see who made the Europa League, and I, by God, was it clear who deserves to be playing Champions League football and who really requires the level that is at Europa League, and I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, I know Michael Beale talked during the week, there's not too much actually regarding the financial difference between making the Champions League and Europa League. Not even though I think that's a little bit talking around it. I wouldn't even argue that the Europa League is that easier a competition. If we're actually going to be defending like this, people, we might go ahead and break another European record and not for good reasons, people, because that there was brutal. And, you know, you look at it, PSV, that is their first time qualifying for the Champions League in five seasons. They are not a regular Champions League side. Very good individual players, good team. We spoke about them. In fact, I said they were a great team, and I do stand by that, by God. Was that shown to be true? But they are not a regular Champions League side. People, but they, yet they went out there and absolutely scanted us in that fashion. Can you imagine if we managed to sneak through like we did last year, last year, sorry, sneak through the back door? What real Champions League sides could have done to this level of defending, this level of tactical cluelessness in terms of where to put a midfield. People, the gaps that was there the day, genuinely, Moses would have had the easiest time alive getting people across there, people, because he had nothing to do. There was just so much space and gaps everywhere. It was absolutely embarrassing to watch, and I do feel genuinely embarrassed being a Rangers fan, and I'm sure a lot of Rangers fans feel the exact same. You can take getting beat, you can even take getting battered, especially when you play the levels of the, the individual talent we played in the day, but it was the way. We went about it, people, especially the second half. And second half is when most of the go goals obviously happen, but, and we will speak about that in detail. But see, even the first half, about the 27th minute, I just remember getting annoyed because we were so set in defending. We were so set in our ways. It was just like, is there any bit of belief in this Rangers squad that we can do what we want to achieve and what we've done last season? Because that's the biggest frustration for me, people. That first half, we had the chances. We did. We set up and we talked on yesterday's preview video that this game is set up for us to get very little of the ball, but counter them. There will be space in behind. There was three key incidents where we all had an opportunity to play Rabi Matundo in behind the PSV side and I said it had to be on us to be good enough in those moments and we weren't good enough. Barisic slack with one of the passes. Raskin, barely disappointed with him. I don't know how he messes up this pass and Jose has to make the pass as well. That is three major opportunities to change the flip side of this game and put us on our way but the chances were very slim but they came, we missed, and what happened? We got absolutely slapped, people. So I, this is almost a mercy killing. People, can you imagine if we had sneaked through with that defence and that midfield and leaving those gaps against the likes of Bayern Munich? Now they've got the likes of Kane, the Real Madrids, the Man Cities, people. What the score lines could have been. Jack Butlin kept this at five the night. We got beat 5-1. The night Jack Butlin stopped it feed being double digits, and that's not a line on me just trying to take a wee bit of dig and trying to use humour as a coping mechanism. That could have been double digits the day we got scanted 5 1, and our goalie was by far our best player. Now, if that doesn't embarrass you, people, I don't know what else does. And you know, I didn't even watch the pressers and anything like after the game because I'm not wanting to hear bitterly disappointed, I'm not wanting to hear about reactions. And I know there was a wee bit of handbags at the end. I think Cantwell Raskin was getting stuck in or anything like that, but date when it matters, lads. You know what I mean? Date it where it matters, because we certainly did not day in the day, and my head's kind of scattered, a wee peek behind the curtains, if you will, uh, Wizard of Oz style, I walked there here like John Wayne people. Now, normally, it would have probably been because I was at the gym yesterday for the first time in six weeks after tearing my groin, and I'm a wee bit vulnerable in the old legs department, but also now, I actually think it's actually because of what I witnessed. It was safe for me being a fan, so I can only imagine the embarrassment the players actually felt, and I'm sure a lot of you feel the exact same way as me, people. That is a sad one. The pause well and truly need to be licked after that, and I said pause there, by the way, didn't I? Pause the video, but let's go ahead and talk about it then. Because again, we started the game off 
pretty much the way we all expect. The exact same in the preview, sitting back, PSV had all the boss, 70% of all, exact same, no surprises anywhere. But again, those three major opportunities um, did fall away with Raskin, Barisic and Jose Cervantes missing f major opportunities. This is the Champions League level you want to get to. You just can't miss how wide open those passes actually were. Now, Jose actually did put in a good ball in the very first minute. Believe it or not, I actually thought we started well. In this game, we got beat 5 1, and I thought we started well because Jose puts a ball in the six yard box in the opening minute of the game. Where's our centre forward? Where is he? Half outside the box. People never knew that's a tap in for anyone else. It would have been a tap in for Tony two goals, but we've not got that predatory style finisher. Well, we're probably doing roof, but obviously, with his injury history, he wasn't registered. But I'm talking about with the players we've brought in, that's not the mindset that we've actually brought in to the team. And these are very, very fine margins. They're one or two incidences, but that's the difference, eh? Qualifying people and getting beat at this level and I we were taught a very very harsh lesson and it's a lesson that we need to learn from because we certainly didn't learn from it from the game and that will probably take us in naturally into the game reaction because after creating a couple opportunities maybe creating a chance Golton hit a long ball in behind to Dessers who runs through and rolls it wide he's got to get that on target at this level I like you big man and I will defend you and I think there's a player in there but in that level you need to get at least on target I know it got flagged for a handball but VAR would have shown it wasn't a handball so if he puts it in the back in it we're all celebrating and the goal is given that is a chance you didn't get many as a centre forward at this level and their centre forward missed it but so did they people because the young had an easy header 19th minute in as Bayoko turned oh no I can't believe how many times I'm going to say this do you know Bayoko I don't know if I'm mispronouncing that or anything by the way I'm very sore in the membrane but he's left footed we talked about this right he's a Belgian very quick he likes to cut inside and he likes to cross with his life fit. Could somebody have told Michael Beale and the players? Because we never, ever, ever once expected them to cut inside and hurt us. We got away with it in the 19th minute. Turn away from Barisic, dropped at the back post. De Jong missed it. Then Dessler's missing him right, right. Karma balance. It's even now. Who's going to make the next opportunity count? And obviously who will make the, the next mistake? And I... It was clear who that team was going to be. And the reason I said it, people, is because we got our warning scare just a minute before they put the ball in the back in it with the exact same bra back, uh, breakdown, I should say. Three on two on the right-hand side. They'd done it at Ibrox all day. That's why I thought Lundstrom was actually going to play on the right-hand side instead of Jose because he can then defend and help Tavernier out. But Jose and Tavernier both want to do the same thing going forward and we are so out of balance every single time. It was so evident Versus last week, and I thought we'd changed it in the second half, especially when Lundstrom came on. But we ended up starting Lundstrom, but playing him centrally and just leaving the right hand side again, abandoning it. And it was wide open the first time. Like I said, they passed in there, they pass it in to San Barry, who was sensational, by the way, and ended up forcing Jack Butlin into an incredible save with his feet. And I'm up, got like that. I'm like, what a save, Jack Butlin, right? Identify that again, be wake up till we can all see it. A diddy like me can see it, please. They son. And nothing was done as three or four minutes later, the exact same. And when I say the exact same, it's not an exaggeration. It's the exact same bit of play. Three on two, doing the right-hand side. Jose and Tavernier getting played in behind the ball. Comes in and San Barry, to be fair, just runs away for wee Raskin. Puts the ball into the back. And it's a great header, great run. He gets the goals that he actually truly deserves. He was simply sensational and by far the best player on the park, in my opinion. Veerman's obviously a sensational talent. I've talked on that previously. But the guy that really stood out to me was that San Barry, who absolutely tore us to shreds. And I showed we Raskin and maybe showed us who rate Raskin is to the help people there is still places to go for that lad and where he needs to improve because San Barry I love you wee man but he roasted you a new one but I somehow some way we may end up surviving in to the first half just 1-0 down we go in and I'll be honest I was fine one nothing doing because I thought right well, at least we've got attacking talent we've got Seema we've got Danilo Danilo, by the way, we're going to talk about it. Our marquee signing just sitting here picking up benches like he's replaced Hadji in terms of that scenario. We've got um, Lammers in that as well. So we've got attacking talent, right? So I'm thinking, right, we'll obviously make some changes here. The biggest glaring one needs to be Jose off. Rate Jose. Still think he's going to be a very good player. But at this level, on this night, versus this opposition, he needed to be took off immediately. And Ryan Jack really, truly had to come on. I know it's easy to say in hindsight, but it is isn't. 
people, just me in hindsight, every single Rangers fan on this planet Earth was shouting the exact same thing. The right hand side needed a bit of protection. Did they do anything? No. And guess what? Less than 30 seconds in to the second half, the exact same combination, three on two on the right hand. I'm sorry I'm boring you, people. I know I'm boring you because you're hearing the exact same thing. It's the exact same stuff. Wish Rangers absolutely adapted, but thankfully we end up getting it cleared away as this time Goldson blocks it. But that was three times. Guess what happened three minutes later? You guessed it, people. Three on two on the right hand side behind Jose and Tavernier. Ball comes in. This time it's Suter that blocks it. Four of them, people. It's not even the 50th minute of the game. Speaking of the 50th minute, by the way, Barisic goes off injured after pulling his calf. He goes off, so that leaves young Sterling to be given an opportunity. And boy, was he taught a tough lesson as well at this level. But I'm not going to tear at him too much. He's obviously a young lad in a bit of a project here or there. But I uh, certainly wasn't to blame for any of the goals. But the goal did come, or the original cross, or he did come from that side. But again, it's no near him. He ends up marshalling his man, actually, because he steps one side to Bayoko. And Bayoko actually has to pass it backwards. But then the cross comes in, people. It's hard to talk about Rangers, people. It really, really is, especially when the word... I feel like I should call it E-Fended because there's no D. Actually, and it's a cross to the back post that Tavernier loses. Suter just switches off like his controllers just ran out. And then Sanbari runs right in behind and gets an easy tap in after De Jong, sorry. Does the exact same ball as Jose Cibentes did in the first half. Born at the six-yard box. But you know what PSV had? attacking mindset and someone running into tapping the ball by god that'd be glorious if we ever saw that at a football club oh aye we did we gave him away to parma but moving on for there it's new 2-0 in the game you're thinking well we need to make some changes now surely we're going to go ahead and make some changes and after five or six minutes of pure domination from psv Ole's passing shots again a great save by Butland down to his left hand side from by Yoko I believe again he cut inside very good save we did make a couple of changes as both Lammers and Danilo came on Young Raskin came off and so the Dessers again Dessers hard to defend you tonight big man you were just out marshalled by a CDM playing at centre back you should have been feasting you should have been better you weren't at all and Raskin oh, it's, it's hard you know because I rate Raskin very highly, but I thought he was absolutely tore to shreds by San Barry. And actually, I'm getting subbed off as probably justice and just to keep his confidence and his morale going in to Sunday because he was getting feasted on. It was like a vulture. San Barry was running off him every single time. Again, Massa would have been Jose, but I understood the Raskin. I'm not surprised that didn't he lose us the game. But a couple of attacking players on, we start putting pressure on. And guess what? People, we actually start making the right decisions with some of our passes. That's right. See, when we go in dangerous areas, we want to messing up the pass or playing too safe. We play a nice little uh, bit of play. Cantwell chips it over to Lammers. Lammers crosses it to the back post. And is our centre forward there to tap it in? No, but our right back is. He's there to tap it in. And then we're back in it. How are we back in it? How are we still in this tie 60 odd minutes into this game? I don't know people but we are let's keep the heat now and let's see if the crowd starts to get nervous and let's see if PSV gets nervous oh wait a minute we just gave away a stupid free kick here player running well, he's back to goal gone absolutely nowhere right just defend this set piece said you know what happens 91 seconds of hope was dashed people 91 seconds Tavenier gives away a stupid foul it doesn't need to do he just doesn't need to do that foul, and that's the fine margins again. But what really sickens me, people, about this goal, it's not the fact that it's 91 seconds, and it's not the fact that it was a needless foul. It's the way we chose to defend this, people. And that's when you look to your leaders, your Taverniers, your Goltons as well. I'm a big Golton guy, you know I am, but this is absolutely shambolic for the big man. I know I know it's Beal, and I know it's the coaching staff want to play zonal marking, but this is pathetic, people. We have just brought ourselves back into the game. They've got a free kick. Do you know who's marking De Jong? The best header of a ball in the actual box. Is it Golton? Is it Suter? Is maybe Suter standing off on me block him like what they keep doing to Golton so he can't get a run on the ball? No, no, and no. We ignore that. We send Golton and Suter, both centre-backs, probably our two best guys aerially in the team. It's not a high bar, but they are the best to the back posts almost marking each other and we ask Sam Lammers to mark De Jong guess what happens yep 
That's exactly what was going to happen. It's incredibly naive, especially at this level, and I can't believe we went ahead and done it, especially at that moment when the adrenaline's supposed to be high. That's when you need your leaders to grab people by the scruff and the next says, you go here, you go here, or Goldson, I'm looking at him being the rock, if you will, your defence. Everyone says he's the vocal, he's the commander, and everything. he's got to look at the young and say, I'm take him then. Someone else go where I'm supposed to be standing, marking a four for eight wingers at the back post. Maybe being the biggest defender in the team, I should go with the biggest aerial threat. I'm looking at so, uh, so, um, Golton taking the, the initiative there and taking that, but aye, no one does. But aye, what happened next was almost unforgivable. Now, there was occasional moments like Danilo playing Rabi in behind. Rabi as a shot. Rabi with a glorious solo run, where he runs, beats a couple people, ends up hitting the post. That's fine margins. That's maybe unluck. Right, you can say that's unlucky. When Rabi runs through the team, hits the post, that's unlucky. But the rest of it is just almost pathetic, people. As the way and the manner of these goals we conceded was nothing short of embarrassing. Joey Veerman ends up getting his goal that he well and truly has deserved, not only this season, but his last couple games versus us last year. He took a lot of flack for the press. We've had our fun with him. But he ended up having a laugh this season. He did in the last season. He was left greeting. This season, he's left smiling and mocking. And ah, It's a great finish doing to the left-hand side. Nothing Butlin can really do there. But guess how it came about? Go on. I'll give you a couple seconds in the comments if you missed it. That's right. A free on two down the right-hand side of Rangers. Ball comes in at the six-yard box. Falls to Veerman. It's in the back of net. Five times, people. Five so champ, we want to play in the Champions League. We're making this mistake five times into a single game. It's genuinely horrific. And I, just to sum up, just to put an overall bow on how bad this performance was actually going to be, Conor Golton hit the best shot that we've hit on target all evening. Unfortunately, it was in to our end net as he pat Butlin passes to him and then Golton just doesn't even look, just fires it back to Butlin. That's a player's seed that's gone. That's what that is. I think everyone was shell shot. Everyone's head was going. It doesn't look up. Tries to just rush it back as PSV four one up. Are still putting pressure on us. Forces into the mistake. Goes back in own goal. Game set match. Well and truly has been for a while right enough. But I, that is the story of the game. People, we handbags at the end, but the only team that looked like scoring was obviously PSV. You'd say Butlin was by far our best player and the only Rangers player that really turned up. I'd maybe say that uh, Rabi deserves a wee bit of sun because at least he was trying to do things, you know what I mean? He got in the ball, he hit the post, put in a couple of dangerous crosses, but I'm looking at the rest of the Rangers players and they've got to have a big, deep look at themselves in the mirror after that, people, because you just can't be pulling on the Rangers shirt and playing that poorly and being that invisible. Levels or no, you can take getting beat, but run yourself into the ground, take a bit of initiative and set pieces, put yourself here, Put some, just put something on their arse. You know what I mean? They wingers had the easiest job in the world today because we didn't touch either one of them. Either one of them. Just nail one of them. Just see if they fancy it. Again, I'm not saying go out and injure players or anything, but, but football is football. If someone's having a good game, you you get the ball, but you leave someone on them and just see if he fancies it. They had the easiest job in the world as they were given time and space, and you give time and space to players like that, they will scan you. And that's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. The only saving grace is we go straight into the Europa League. We'll obviously talk about that on Friday. We'll probably be better suited to there as we'll maybe get an opportunity to actually play teams like... I know there's going to be a lot of teams laughing at, but we all know what's going to happen to Celtic as well. That's just the, the way Scottish football is. We are so far off the Champions League level to compete at that level. They'll get scudded and all that as well very, very shortly, but that's the way football is, people. It's all money these days. We know what's going to happen. I'm just thankful and happy that we finally get back to our tin pot Scottish football as everyone actually calls it, and we return on Sunday with uh, what needs to be a massive performance. I'm not going to use the word reaction or anything like that, or I'm not going to use any of that, but we're back on Sunday, and I imagine it'll be a drastically different outcome of a game as we'll be playing a team that's a lot more on the even keel, and they're about as bad as we are right now, which might be saying a lot defensively, because they are missing their best players, but aye. It's probably not going to be a football fanatic on Sunday. It's not going to be the greatest game, but aye, it's two teams going out in battle, and we'll talk about that in a couple of days, but I am done talking about Champions League football. By goodness gracious me, did they maybe get what they deserved last year? And Aye, that's it. That's my thoughts and opinions. Were we beaten? Yes. Did we deserve to be beaten? Yes. Were we anywhere near it? No. Jack Butlin, the only guy that stood it to me. A lot of pressure on Bielner to get another, get, get a game plan actually set and work on Sunday because he can't keep losing big games like this or that will be the end day at people still very early in the season still think he'll be successful still think we'll win on Sunday genuinely I know people's going to be laughing and mocking 
but put Celtic against that team they're getting beat as well ladies and gentlemen that's just the way it is but I Bill needs to start figuring out these big games and start going ahead and winning them but until then more on that in a couple of days take care of yourselves everyone I've been Cedron on to all the best see what I mean I actually upload after bad results it's weird I'll never ever catch on but I take care of yourselves all the best and bye bye